I'm really digging these sort of thumbnails where you have like Professor Cole and then you have the chalkboard. You have all these characters and I, I think they're pretty fun thumbnails. So let me know in the comment section down below if you're enjoying these thumbnails. And of course, oh, hey yo, those thumbnails. Support your boy with a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Now we did a video on a similar subject a few weeks ago talking about Yonko level. Check it over here, boom, in this corner. And in this video, I kind of break down what Yonko level means colloquially to many people that power scale in the One Piece community. And now for this video, of course, as you can see in the thumbnail on the title, Admiral level. We are going to explain what Admiral level means to many people and to me personally in the One Piece power scaling corner of the fandom. And the thing here is that Admiral level is actually a lot simpler to kind of hone in on because Admiral level is based on the Admirals, one of the highest military ranks of the Marines. Right now, there are three current Admirals in the world of One Piece. Number one is Borsalino, AKA Kizaru. Number two is Aramaki, AKA Greenbull. And number three is Isho, AKA Fujitora. All of them are current Admirals. Therefore, the standard at which you gauge the Admiral level, those three individuals. And what's even more important is that Oda did something pretty unusual and rare, but it kind of gives us a better framework here for a One Piece power scale. The last time he did something similar was Doriki in the pre-time skip with CP9. But in this case here, we're not actually doing it through physical contact on Fukuro, no, it's the bounty. What Oda did recently is through the cross guild, gave a universal bounty to every admiral in the series. And every admiral carte blanche has a bounty of three billion berries. This is a really important thing Oda did. Why? Because normally you don't want to power scale based on bounty. That's not a smart thing to do. Like for example, during Whole Cake Island, who had a higher bounty than Zoro did? Pedro. <laughs> Pedro has a higher bounty than Zoro on Whole Cake Island. However, most of us, 99% of fans are saying, no, 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 no. If Zoro and Pedro fight, Pedro is getting the work. Pedro is getting dominated. Because we know that Zoro, he, he's that guy. He has done way more impressive things than Pedro has. Maybe Pedro, on off chance, has a dynamite. He lights it up, he grabs Zoro, says a few prayers, and then uh, kaboom. But <laughs> for the most part, <laughs> for the most part, we believe that Zoro gets that W. And also there are characters like Buggy, where Buggy absolutely is a man, in terms of combat skills, he belongs in the single digit millions, not the single digit billions. His charisma's off the charts. He can manipulate causality, has Lady Luck by his side constantly, like Hercule or King from One Punch Man or Regan Arataka from Mob Psycho. But combat wise, he ain't that guy. The same thing going for Chopper, where Chopper is clearly, <laughs> obviously worth way more than his bounty's worth. So there are examples where bounty scaling is not good scaling. However, what makes an admiral an admiral? As far as you know, they are the strongest military force that the world government can utilize, according to Robin's words on Long Ring, Long Land, when they fought against Kuzan. Essentially, power during the world military draft over the time skip isho and aramaki they beat out other people including momosagi and shiton uh brown pig i think pink bunny they beat out everybody that was their competitor in terms of power and they became people worthy of the rank of admiral and we can see what they do too where in <laughs> Fujitora has a gnarly introduction where this guy drops a meteorite for God's sakes. And even though Dolphy does try to attack him a few times, the man is very comfortable fighting against Dolphy, fighting against Law, against Sabo. The dude is just straight up chilled for the most part. And then Aramaki, even though he does get stunned on by Shanks, keep in mind that he did have the confidence to go into Wano country. Confidence, but probably more like arrogance, if I'm being honest, to try and take out Luffy, him by himself, one admiral. He was ready to stand on business and try and capture straw hat heads. All for that single attaboy. All for that single pat over the head by Akainu. And yes, even though Luffy and Sanji and Jinbei and Zoro, they were there 
watching the fight go down against the samurai and aramaki and they're pretty confident that if they need to step in they can step in and handle business but the fact that aramaki was that comfortable going in the first place does prove that yeah the guy is very powerful he even takes a conquerors hockey infusion attack by yamato goes youch and then keeps on pushing you have that gigantic blast breath that momonosuke does she takes up that huge wooden golem body here comes a whole new body you know and even though we don't know the details he did take out weevil off screen that is a plus for sure when it comes to the power of green bolt so ultimately speaking that three billion bear bounty i think is actually really important because let's say in the future we get more bounty reveals let's say we have the bounty reveal of silver axe and he's around 2.7 billion berry let's say wang Ji is around 3.1 billion berry bounty that indicates to us that these people in terms of their combat skills could be near whether they're above or below they're going to be near the admirals in terms of their combat skills so from here then we have a very 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 easy branch off who are other people that could fit in this admiral spectrum of power whether it's going to be the lowest or the highest where could they fit there are three people in particular that are in the same position as the other three admirals number one gop gop chu joe number two trafalgar d water law and number three, it is what it is, Eustace Captain kid -or. Now, <laughs> before I get to Kid real quick, we have to tackle Garp, and Garp has been studly for damn sure. Even though he didn't beat Kuzan, and there were indications during that whole raid that Kuzan was somewhat holding back, hesitant, he was pretty studly, and according to what they say during the whole raid, he is in the same camp as the other admirals. Whether he's actually above them in the spectrum, or below them in that same spectrum, like within that spectrum, it doesn't change the idea that he is relative to the admirals. That's the first thing. Second thing, law. I mean, law. Absolutely phenomenal. He speaks for himself. Like literally had a move that matched the Bajran gun in terms of the depth of that hole. Bypassing all defenses, going right for the organs, acknowledged by Kaido, acknowledged by Big Mom, literally made a sword that was several times the length of Onigashima's whole No, 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 no. I don't I don't I don't have to. Haguru Kid though. Here is the thing about Kid. People feel very icky when it comes to Kid being worth in earnest that three billion berry bounty. Not just because obviously Kid and Law didn't do as good against Big Mom compared to Luffy and Kaido, true. And then offensively, he does not look even as good as Luffy or Law. This is also very true. And obviously, what happened after the arc in Wano Country, where we go to El Baf and here's a red haired Giga Chad that does one attack, and Kid and his whole crew are like, oh my god, we have to get of the rubbings of the pony glyph thank you but by the way these two giants in the corner mm, they're already set up i'm sorry it's a bad it is a bad look for the kid pirates absolutely absolutely without doubt however kid has feats when it comes to durability and endurance he has some of the best feats in onigashima he's taken so many attacks from heavy hitters yonko and of of course how to do the whole thing with hawkins and killer and then he still is able to continue to fight against big mom even at one point taking an elbath spear now mind you he wasn't that whole punk gibson form but at the same time that's part of kids assets too Kid has a lot of utility that people kind of ignore. When he has metal in the area, his utility spikes. He can do so many different things. He literally secured Zeus in a box for Law Teleport. And that was a big play because that allowed them to get Big Mom off the rooftop. Kid has immense utility that can be very effective in the fight. A few times, Big Mom and Kaido, they tried to attack Kid, but it didn't work out because all they're attacking is the scrap metal of his contraption, where there was that flying Eggman form or the bull, all they're doing is attacking Scrap. He even says, hey, just Scrap, and he can reform it. We know that Law couldn't move Big Mom and Kaido in his room because their hockey was so tremendous. But Kid, he could actually bypass the hockey defense of Big Mom and then assign, at least temporarily, assign magnetism to her. And at that time, Big Mom is in a much more powerful form compared to a rooftop form. He's able to actually damage Big Mom, the Iron Balloon, with his physical force through attacks like the damn punk. And even though Law could apply his, uh, his re-room onto Big Mom, it was 
in the midst of a major attack from Kid while Big Mom is only losing strength. Kid does have the feats in Onigashima that not many people can actually match in terms of endurance, in terms of even, let's say, physical strength through his ability, where he can even move around Kaido. And Kaido is titanic in size. Kaido can sit on top of a mountain like it was a toilet seat, and Kid could still slam him, bro. Kid does have the feats. Offensively, yes, not as good as Luffy and Law, true, but he has the feats in Onigashima to back up his claim to power. Obviously, after Wano Country, <laughs> he could still fire off more damn punks than his Onigashima version. Now, maybe it was like a stamina thing here, where because he was at full HP, he could fire off more damn punks in that future timeline that never happened compared to his Onigashima version. But we don't know that. And because we don't know that, I think we have to take it at face value, one. And then two, it lines up with what normally happens, where normally over the course of time, characters do get stronger just innately, unless they have old age or diseases holding them back. Shank says that about Kid and his crew, that even the pre-time skip, Zor something similar too, but I forgot when. But that being said, all I have to say is that even though you may feel icky about it, Kid is somewhere in the spectrum of the Admiral rank. Even let's say at the very bottom of said spectrum, he's still within that spectrum. And now let's talk about beyond the spectrum. First, above the spectrum. If we gauge on Bounty, Bounty alone, then people like Mihawk are gonna be over Admirals, which to me makes a lot of sense. I've had for years that Mihawk is stronger than every Admiral, and I think his Bounty of 3.5 build does indicate such, yes. But there's also two former Admirals that are also above Admirals in my book. Number one, Akainu. Pretty obvious the man is Fleet Admiral. I'll be very surprised to see Akainu lose to Aramaki, Green Bull, or Fujitora, or Kizaru in a one-on-one -on -one fight. And then number two is Kuzan. Mm. You see, even though Garp was studly, very studly, on full Lead Island, he fought for a prolonged period of time, both on and off screen, but all we see is the beginning of it and then the end of it. But during that whole raid by him and the Marine Cats, Kuzan never goes down. He took every attack that we see from Garp on screen, attacks from Garp off screen, came out of nowhere to try and fight against Garp. What did Kuzan say? You guys can't handle Garp Chu Joe. And then he's rushing Garp, because that's his job. Kuzan, out of all the Blackbeard Pirates on Fuller Island, he put in the most work and he did not go down. And again, it is hinted at that he was holding back, somewhat hesitant. So Kuzan, I think, based on the portrayal and the feats, is above an admiral, particularly when he fought against Akainu for a very long period of time, for several days on end. And because they fought for so long, it would mean that they are really, really close to each other in terms of power. But you can't say the same thing about two other cats that are worth three billion berries. Kizaru and Monkey D. Luffy. <laughs> you see, all it took, boom! Start. Mr. Saturn, I don't feel so good. good. Th that's all it took. That's all it took, man. Luffy, stamina-wise, not so good. Not so good at all. However, the fact that Luffy had to deal with added damage, keep that in mind too. Luffy gets kicked into the Frontier Dome by Kizaru, then has to run through it again to get back into the Labo Stratum. Kizaru doesn't have any of that, trying to focus on Vega Punk and trying to kill the other uh, satellite bodies. Obviously, Luffy eats a laser beam. Luffy has to deal with extra stuff, while Kizaru has none of that extra stuff going on when it comes to extra added damage. Though some folks may want to try and slide in the Sento Maru's fight against Kizaru, but ain't nobody believes that. And Luffy still, boom, he still hit him with one attack, and Kizaru is now currently stun locked. So Luffy, I think, has the feats Absolutely, whether it's Onigashima, and now in this arc of Egg Island, he has the feats to back up his claim to be superior than anyone else that has a three billion berry bounty, including the Admirals. Saturn is an interesting case because we do not know how powerful Saturn is at this point in time. Saturn does have this immortality thing going on, probably, where Bonnie stabbed him and he recovered, and the hypothetical Ushioni form does look pretty nasty. He does these dark side Omega beams and someone just dies. Yeah, Sanji take one, souls Bonnie, but that's really it. How powerful is he in earnest? Who knows? Is he as powerful as an admiral, though? We, we have to wait and see. I mean, they clearly have power, but they could be more of, like, gimmick fighters, where 
once you get past the gimmick. So Saturn, Marcus Mars, Tommen, and so on. Once you get past that gimmick, you got him. But the Admirals, they don't have any gimmicks. They're just nasty people. They're just flat out nasty. Some of them can even permanently change if they wanted to an entire ecosystem for life. So I need to see a lot, a lot from the Gorosei to say that they're actually above Adam level. They could be, but right now, I just don't know. I just don't know. And in fact, because of Monkey D Dragon's words, there's more promise for the God Knights to be superior in combat than the Gorosei. The actual battle to bring down the entire system begins when the God Knights make their play when they're mobilized. So people like Garland, maybe someone else in the, among that clique, they could be people that are stronger or as strong as admirals, fair enough. But the girls say, I need to see more. Now on the opposite side of the aisle, below the spectrum of admiral, I would say cleanly it is people that are Top and Yonko commanders, the Jinbeis, you have the Sanjis, you have the Zoros, you have the King of the Wildfires, Queen of the Plagues, you have the Katakuris, in theories, the Smooth Six, you have the Marcos, people like that. I think it's a very safe bet to say, yeah, these folks will be like, let's say, the next leg down for the most part. Based on Marine Ford War Marco, these people can give an admiral a tough fight. It will not be easy for an admiral to beat folks of this caliber. Potentially, there's even people that are greater than this, closer to admiral level than the younger commanders. And right now, that's Boa Hancock and Crocodile. Now, Boa is one thing. We know she's fierce. She, she is outstanding. But Crocodile, who got beat by Luffy in the pre-time skip? That dude. Oda did say in an interview, he believed that Crocodile came too early into the series. In order to indicate that fact, he gives him a two, almost a two billion berry bounty. And Crocodile did show a lot of sauce, a lot of sauce during Marine Ford War. He did. So it makes you wonder, is it, is it possible that Crocodile is stronger than people like King the Wildfire, Mark of the Phoenix? potentially Kata Curry. Is that even possible? But I am confident in saying that, okay, hold on. If he did fight against Kizaru or against Green Bull, I think he would lose, but it will be a tough battle for them to win. Now there is one last person, the curious case of Rob Lucci, AKA Rob Gucci, AKA Rob Ababucci. Rob Gucci got folded by Luffy. <laughs> it was a three piece. It was a three piece masterclass and as far as we can tell, not that much hockey being used, as far as we can tell. However, right now he's fighting against Zoro, and Zoro and Lucci seems to be a lot, uh, substantially, significantly closer of a matchup compared to Luffy versus Lucci. We see King Hell Zoro against Awakened Form Rob Lucci, and that's still going on. So it seems to be that that's a much closer fight. Even though I do lean Zoro, I lean Zoro over Lucci for sure. That is a much closer fight compared to Luffy and Rob Lucci. Hence why someone like Lucci is also not Admiral level because Kizaru required the White Star gun. Lucci requires, oh boy. So yes, Lucci is also not Admiral level at this point, which by default, because it's so close right now in their fight, means Zoro as well. And folks near Zoro, of course, the Sanji Gene, Jimmy's and blah, 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 all that stuff. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is it. That is how I perceive Admiral level in the world of One Piece. Of course, I did not mention everything. Like, for example, it's very clear the Seraphim are going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. But will they be as strong as Admirals? I'm not too sure. We have, we have to wait and see. One. Two is that, obviously, you have Vice Admirals. Technically speaking, Vice Admirals and Rank are under Admirals. So, wouldn't they be in the same camp as people like Azoro and Asanji? a Mark of the Phoenix and so on and so forth. They're very tricky because you can have studly vice admirals like Smoker or Virgo, Dalmatian, those guys, Momonga, right? Who is the current leader of the old Marine headquarters in the Grand Line, Momonga is. At the same time though, you got Maynard who got folded by Bartolomeo in Dress Rosa. Whoa, I mean, bro. <laughs> The vice admirals are all over the place. So I can't even begin, honestly. And then there's other people like, for example, Rayleigh or Sengoku, who I would argue would also be in the same sort of situation as someone like Garp. 
Absolutely. And ultimately, it does depend on you, the person, as to where they lie in relation to Garb. Rarely not as much, but Sengoku most definitely. Let me know your stance on the subject matter at hand. If you enjoy this video, once again, make sure to slam that like button. Of course, subscribe to the channel and join the notification squad. I'm going to catch you cats on the flip side. Bye-bye.